my, 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 guys. <laughs> when are you guys gonna listen to me? When are you guys gonna finally start listening to me? I have said it for years now, and I'm gonna keep saying it, but every time I've told you guys to set your expectations to low, you don't. And now we get, of course, the random, oh, I was depressed, I was annoyed comments, but you know what? That was on you. I gave you the warning, but it is what it is. WWDC is over, so now let's recap the event. <laughs> YouTube was popping. Michael here. Welcome back to Technoid. And again, today's episode is only going to be WWDC. We're going to recap WWDC and we're going to talk a little bit more about the event because there are some things I want to talk about with it. And there's a lot of things also that people did point out and I kind of am on their side. But again, guys, uh, real quickly, uh, I'm trying to grow my Twitter page. I'm at 193 followers. We're almost at 200. Uh, I'm trying to expand on different social medias. So please do follow me on Twitter at Technoid12 as it will help me out a lot and definitely will give you guys better stuff. I do more than just tech on that channel. I do more and things other than that. But again, let's get right to WDC. All that out of the way, let's get it going. So WDC is over. And just like I said at the beginning of the video, I guess you guys aren't listening because for months I have avoided covering rumors of products. I avoided covering rumors, I avoided talking about product releases, I avoided everything that had to do with a rumor saying WWDC was going to show us hardware. And I did it for a reason, because for four years now, and now it's been four years, I have said it many, 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 many times. Set your expectations too low. I have told you guys since day one. But I'm telling you guys the last time and mark this video down because I am going to make this the golden technoid rule. And I promise you guys, if you follow this rule, I am just going to be a dummy again. Uh, let's talk about the event. Anyway, so WDC was actually pretty good, and for the most part, I wasn't really bored. I was really into it, but I can't help but be honest with you, I was a tad disappointed in one particular software. We'll get to that in a second. But the whole gist of WDC gave us the software end iOS 15, iPad OS, Watch OS 8, TV OS, and other things. Now, for the most part, we're going to focus on the big four. We're not going to talk about tvOS or homeOS. Now, a lot of people are going to say, oh, didn't you say homeOS was going to debate? Guys, they spent a whole segment talking about home, the home kit. They basically are expanding it now to homeOS. They don't have to call it homeOS exactly, but we're seeing the fundamentals, so technically I was right on that. But for the most part, WDC did deliver in areas, but I did come out of the event feeling like... This wasn't really a big significant upgrade in OS Jump. Where most years have some significant m upgrades and have some significant things, this one kind of left me feeling a little bit empty, and I'll explain. So let's start it up with iOS 15. Now iOS 15 has a lot of new features and a lot of things that have been expanded upon. So for starters, the iPhone is a lot more customizable, which is something that I think everybody and their grandmothers are gonna love. I also like the fact that iOS 15 continues on the formula that basically iOS 14 left it on. They do expand a lot about widgets. They redesigned the maps, which I think honestly maps is gonna be a big thing in the coming iOS updates. We also see a lot more on-device intelligence with the iPhone. They also explore moments with focus. They've also got basically FaceTime and iMessage expanded with notification things that I've already talked about. But one of the biggest things, and a lot of people are talking about it, is how FaceTime is now like a Zoom alternative. And you can now technically use Android and FaceTime now. That is actually pretty cool. Now, a lot of people aren't gonna give it the biggest buzz about it, because again, they have their minds on other things, <laughs> MacBook. But I thought iOS 15 was okay. It wasn't significant in my opinion. I felt like there were some things they could have done to work, but they had a lot of things there, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm just gonna get straight to it. I thought it was okay. 
but I'll have to check it out with public beta and other things in the future. We'll see how it goes, but hopefully iOS 15 will be nice. Now, the biggest disappointment, and I think we all are gonna talk about this one, you're gonna hear from everybody, is iPadOS. Now, they're gonna be YouTubers that come out and they're gonna make their own claims and say why we people that were disappointed are wrong. But I'm here to tell you that that is not the case. And I'm gonna explain to you my evidence why I think iOS, or iPadOS, I apologize, is really a letdown. First of all, Apple supercharges the iPads with the M1 chip, putting it on par with pretty much any computer or a tablet hybrid, whatever you wanna go. Apple gives it the hardware. It is clearly advanced for a tablet. All that power just being weighted to open up and get unlocked. But what we got with iPadOS 15, while it is still a slight redesign and it does use some advantage, it ultimately does not give the iPad Pro full capabilities with the M1 chip. Now, one of the biggest things that everybody has talked about is Pro apps coming onto the iPad. While I would have liked to have seen some of that, I honestly understand why Apple will never put those on. Those are exclusive to the Mac because those are what generate revenue sales for the Mac. If you start bringing things over to the iPad, then the Mac sales are just gonna go down. But I can understand people wanting a need for those Pro apps. But the main thing that really bugged me was that you give the iPad Pro the M1 chip, you give it so much power and hardware, but yet your software can't deliver or give us some of that. Now, there were some cool features, like of course, with they've expanded on with the Mac and also the iPad with the simultaneous screen split where you can use the cursor. So I thought those things were pretty cool, but they still have not added full support for an external monitor. They have still yet to add support to a couple of other things that we will discuss later on. But overall, iPadOS 15 to me was the biggest disappointment of the event because that was the real biggest talking point for the event. Everybody wanted to see Apple step up the game with iPadOS and to me, they did not do that. And anyone that tries to say that we're wrong, people that bought those iPad Pros, now I didn't buy it, but those that did bought it and want to use it as a full powerhouse, you're probably gonna have to wait a little longer now. And of course, there's tons of jokes on Twitter about people returning their M1 iPad Pros. But honestly, guys, just be patient. But I can understand your frustration and rage. The next thing, of course, is watchOS 8. Now, watchOS 8, for me, was okay. I didn't really care much about it, but I was intrigued with a lot of things that they did. One of the coolest things that I liked was the redesign for the breathing app. Also a little bit more integration with, of course, the new home apps or whatever, home kit. And then of course they've added new watch faces with watchOS 8. They've also added new workouts like Tai Chi and Pilates. And then of course a different mindful experience. But the main thing for me with watchOS 8 is that it keeps building upon with watchOS, but it does gives us a little bit of hint of the new Apple Watch with of course being the new redesign and also taking advantage of the display and it's high tech quality. Of course, the Apple Watch Series 6 is gonna do that, but I think the 7 is gonna expand on that a little bit more. So I was really happy to see that. And the last thing, and of course, everybody kind of just tuned out after that point once there was no a MacBook Pro coming. I don't know why anybody believed hardware was gonna get revealed. But the last thing that they talked about, of course, was Mac OS. Um, I am going to be honest with you, I have yet to say no the name, so I am probably gonna say it wrong. Um, Montrary, oh, okay, you know what? I just said that wrong, so let's, Montrary, who cares? Let's, let's move on. Basically, it is, it is going to continue upon, of course, with Mac OS getting the build out with the M1 series chips. However, this time around, they did add some new features that I truly did like. They added the share screen with friends and coworkers with SharePlay. You have a more customizable experience, more different tweaks with Safari, which is something that they really talked about and universal control, which gives you seamless uh, connectivity with your Mac and iPad. On top of that, it also continues on with better quality for photos and also better quality with videos. But of course, I feel like those are gonna be limited to the M1 series MacBooks. And then of course, the last thing they talked about was privacy and of course, things about the home. Now, I kinda did a little, a little rush do because I wanna get to the end of this video, but I will say that I really am glad that Apple is going all in on their HomeKit enabled devices, especially the HomePod mini that they have now given it support for the Apple TV as a soundbar, although I honestly wish that they would still mention the regular HomePod, because even though it's a dead product or a discontinued product, it still is getting a lot of good features, and honestly, Apple is still supporting it, so I don't know why they won't mention it, but they've added new door locks, they've added privacy features with mail and other things, 
So overall, this event was fully software based and hardware less. And they did talk about coding at the end, but here's my takeaway from WDC. While I did enjoy learning about the new features and things coming for the iPad and the Mac, for me, I felt a little bit disappointed. Not because I had any expectations, I set them to low. But I was a little bit disappointed because they didn't really feel as striking to me. Now with most OS updates, you do feel like it feels like a nice refresh or something different along those lines. With me in this update, I didn't really feel that and I felt the biggest disappointment of course was of course iPad OS. But for me, the event itself did its job. It showed us the software, it showed us exactly what we're tuning in to see. And honestly, it shocks me that the software support is so great. Apple is still supporting the iPhone 6S. It kind of makes me want to kind of switch back over and get an iPhone 6S Plus with a headphone jack because I kind of miss the headphone jack. But the point is this, guys. WDC is a software event, and I have said it many times. You already know my golden rule, expectations too low. But the fact that people really thought, they really believed that there were gonna be hardware and the media is trying to bash Apple like they did something wrong. If anybody should be blamed, it's you. Because you spread this hunk of shit to everybody and expect everyone to believe it. This is why I tell people set your expectations low because when the shit doesn't happen, you don't get upset and you go, eh, you know what, eh, better luck next time. But the media is a bunch of freaking hypocrites. When they talk about Apple and hardware for WDC, that is just unbelievable and it's stupid. So for me, if you guys didn't set your expectations low, that's on you. But overall, WDC 2021, it was okay. I felt it could have been a little bit better and I felt like they should have expanded a lot more with the iPad. But Watch OS 8 does look like a nice update. iOS 15, I have a little bit of tweaks hidden there, but I definitely will check it out. I think it's definitely good that Apple's getting a lot more customizable with their OS. And of course, they did talk about TVOS and other things, but that's not the main focus. You want to focus on the big four. And that is it for my recap of WDC 2021. Now guys, we hope you enjoyed this episode. I am gonna get a ton of hates. So you know what, I'm just gonna put my shelter hat on and just go hide in the bunker. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, hit the like button. If you dislike the video, hit the dislike button. That helps with my videos as well. As well as everyone, thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next episode. Have a great rest of your day, guys, and peace.